chopping wood's like the most boring thing ever. Seriously, I got way too much wood. Is your tree farm too big for its bridges? Then get a logging turtle. You'll have more wood than you've got pants to store it in. To build a felling turtle, you're going to have to build a uh, computer first. It's quite simple and cheap. One glass pane, a redstone, and uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of smooth stone. Just pull that thing right out. Go over to the next station here. All right, so you're going to have to add your computer to this. This is seven pieces of iron, a computer, and a chest. And that'll give you a regular standard turtle. This thing can't chop any wood by itself, so you need to give it a diamond axe, and this will turn it into a felling turtle. In town here, I went ahead and built a uh, pretty much a sapling return basin, I guess if you could call it. This one works on uh, ice, so it's got uh, a layer of ice underneath here. And anything that'll drop into it will quickly just scoot along here and then fall down into another trough. It's got some ice on the bottom of it. And get sucked up with an obsidian pipe and end up in this chest right here. So pretty much once I set this thing up, it'll run continuously. So I'm going to stick my felling turtle down right there. And this is the back of it. You can tell because the axe is pointed that way. So, uh... I'm going to want a chest on the left. This is a sapling chest, pretty much. A chest on the right. This is the drop-off chest. And if you want, you can stick a furnace on the top, and that way he'll produce his own fuel forever. So next up, you need to issue a command to this poor, poor little turtle. See, it's paste bin. S T E D I N. Um, get that, <laughs> which is a capital H A N. Uh, J, capital L, 7, capital M, Z, and then the name you want the programmer to be, in this case, Logger, and it'll go ahead and connect to the internet and uh, download a program. So now if I go uh, LS, you can see I have Logger as a program. And uh, this computer craft is awesome. You can uh, connect to the internet with the thing. There's even some browsers you can get, I think. So, next up, go ahead and run your program, just type in logger, and it'll start asking you uh, how many long and wide, like how many trees long and how many trees wide you want to make this. Uh, in this case, this is uh, two spaces between every tree by default, so I'm wanting to put three uh, long and four wide. Oh, I'll just scoot myself over here. It's asking for three long. And then four wide. Okay, then it saves it, and it'll start asking for stuff. Now, at this point, you can leave a default, or if you hit a general any key, except, you know, as long as it's a letter, it'll go ahead to a uh, settings menu here, and you can change all the different settings. So once you've run this program once, it'll save your turtle, uh, it'll give it a name, and that way if you break your turtle, this program will stay on it. The next time you put it down. Normally, if you don't name a turtle, it will never keep anything on it anytime you break it. So, default name is Andy Logger. You can change it to anything you want. And uh, it'll save its name. My Logger. And you can go right back into the settings and change everything again if you want. Let's see, it was space. Okay. And you can also change what slots everything are in. Now if you pay attention down here, it'll highlight what slot everything is in. So if you want dirt in slot 1, uh, it'll show you what slot is currently selected. You can change these out if you want to whatever slot you want. Uh, it'll all still work, no matter what slot you put it in. And here's another farm layout if you need to change the length and width, or if you want to change how many blocks are between the trees. Uh, so depending on what kind of tree you grow, you might need a three or four uh, block gap between your trees. Also, here's the distance to your first tree, because this turtle is going to place the uh, first tree right in front of it. Default, it's two blocks between the turtle and the tree, but you can change that if you want. Uh, let's see, also it has a sleep time here, and this is kind of automatically adjusted. Whenever you, you change your farm layout or give it a different um, 
length times width, it'll calculate how many trees there are and change how much the sleep time is. Uh, default is 10,000 seconds minus 10 seconds per tree. And that's just how long it waits between farming runs. So here's use fuel. Uh, there's an option to turn off fuel uh, in the configuration file for computer craft. That way, if you don't want this thing to use fuel or even ask you for fuel, you can set it so it won't ever ask. Here's the furnace setting. If you don't want it to use a furnace to make its own charcoal, you can set that to false. Here's the sapling chest. If you don't want to store saplings in the chest beside it, you can turn that off. Or if you just want to fill up its own inventory full of stuff, uh, instead of using the output chest, which is this here, uh, you can turn that off. Now, here's the quit program. If you hit that, it will just, you know, close the program. And, of course, the uh, menus are all accessed by the WASID keys. I figured that would be easy to use. So up and down is just your W and S, like just like in Minecraft. The select is like you're turning right. In other words, it is D. Or to go back is the A key. So like you're turning left. So to go back, just get out of that menu, hit A. And it'll start asking for you for stuff. So in the first slot, you put dirt. And it'll go ahead and try to find some saplings in the chest. Uh, if it doesn't have enough uh, saplings in that chest, uh, it will ask you for more saplings. And it will check to see how many it needs for the first row, plus one, because it always wants to keep one spare sapling in there just for comparison and stuff. So I suggest throwing as much as you can, at least a stack. And if you want, you can throw in two stacks, because they're, they're both t uh, sapling spots here. Plus, if you really wanted to, you can fill up this entire chest full of saplings, and it'll keep refilling itself. Next, it'll ask for uh, some fuel. You can put a lot of different things in here besides charcoal, but since the uh, machine works on charcoal, it will, I prefer and recommend using charcoal. And it went ahead and started off, and it's going to go ahead and build the farm for you and place down the saplings. So uh, it doesn't take too long to do that, and it'll only ever put down the dirt once. However, it will check every time uh, whether or not there's a sapling and piece of dirt sitting there. That way, if an enderman walks off with your dirt before your tree grows, it'll still replace the dirt, and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, it does take a while for the trees to grow. That's why it's got a long timer between uh, growth, um, well, pretty much a long timer between logging runs. So the first time it's just going to set up and then it'll go back to base. And it's not going to really do a whole lot else right away. It'll check for furnace, it'll try to make some charcoal, but it doesn't have any wood so it can't. Um, and so then it's just going to sit here for a while. <laughs> I've waited a while and uh, most of my trees grew. And I went ahead and put some saplings and an apple for demonstration purposes in here. Uh, this is pretty much to show that, uh, pretty much show off what it does if something goes into the chest that doesn't belong. As long as you've put uh, the proper sapling right here, it will check to see if it sucks up something that shouldn't be in there, and then it'll stick it in the other chest. But uh, we got to wait about another minute. But in the meantime... Uh, there's some other stuff down here in the uh, menu, or on the display, the GUI here. The tree total here is how many trees it's chopped down. The charcoal is how many charcoal it's made. Saplings is how many saplings it's planted. This is the current fuel level of the turtle. It, you know, if you have the fuel turned on, it will use one bit of fuel, or basically 152 will turn into 151. Um, so I'll use one unit of fuel there for every space it moves, and every piece of charcoal or coal uh, replenishes 80 uh, units of fuel, and it will try to replenish itself every uh, any time it gets below 100. So it's currently at 152, and it's good to go for at least 52 spaces. And this way, if you end up with a ridiculously huge tree. <laughs> it likely won't run out of stuff beforehand. Also, it'll tell you what uh, your farm size is in trees. So, it's finally done. It's refilling its saplings. 
it says, oh, well, this sapple is not a sapling, so let's just stick it over here. <laughs> and off it goes. And it's just going to uh, replant the sapling right away and start knocking the tree down. It lacks his wood. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for another bit of demonstration, let's just say an enderman walks off with this uh, little bit of uh, dirt here. He's like, oh, no. Well, let's just replant it. <laughs> it's good to go. Now, that was a special strange case here, where it broke the sapling. It's supposed to check if there's a sapling there or not, but since I'm using the trees from forestry, it can't seem to check if there's a sapling there or not. So it will just break the sapling and put it right back down every time. If you use vanilla saplings, it will hover over the sapling, see that it's a uh, a proper sapling of the right type and then just move on but it's just some strange bug with forestry nothing I can do about that one so it's gonna take a while to chop this down and go through your entire farm I've done a lot of testing with this thing I wrote this program almost completely from scratch it's a loosely based on a no one's logging program uh, it was the only other one I actually ever seen before this one and it was all it was a modified version it was all messed up so I figured I'd write a new one from scratch and I've spent about a week and a half on this thing and it's it was quite a learning experience learning how to program Lua but uh, I thought it was very rewarding I've been wanting to learn how to program for years and uh, this was a pretty fun thing to do. Plus, I get to share it with you guys since you can all download it anytime you want. Just, you know, slap that command that's going to be in the description into your turtle and it'll download and you'll be able to use this thing right away. Um, also, if there's any bugs in it, I can always do bug fixes and download new versions, or uh, I can put up new versions and stuff too. This is currently version 1.0 and it's been pretty well bug, uh, bug fixed and bug tested. But there's probably been a handful of things I missed here and there. Special weird cases that happened. But normally this thing will go on for as long as it's got room in the chest over there to put that stuff. So if you hooked up the output chest here to some boatcraft pipes and sucked all the stuff out as it came in, he would go forever. As long as... It, enough saplings are dropped. Certain trees don't really drop enough saplings. This teak is one of them. So uh, eventually it will run out of saplings for the teak because it can't quite produce enough saplings to go forever. But a lot of the other trees can. Okay, this guy's finally done and he's gonna make some charcoal. He just, you know, he checks to see if he's got some wood on him and if he's got enough fuel to spare to make some charcoal and he'll just slap it in the furnace and it'll make it in uh, sets of 16. Uh, if you really need more than 16 fuel per run it, then you can change it in the configuration setting and uh, I'll just show you where that's at. Put the program, oops, <laughs> that wouldn't quit for, uh, there we go. So edit uh, logger Okay, so this is my logger program, and I'm accidentally typing into it. <laughs> and this here is the first large set of variables that it uses that were all the options in the menu. And there's one of these that you would change if you want them to produce more fuel at once. Uh, I think it is charcoal number here. This is set to two, and this is two sets of eight. So number of charcoal to make each logging run and multiples of eight yep. charcoal number so just set that to one four eight whatever you want eight was probably the biggest it'll fit in the furnace since that's a whole stack of wood basically and it'll he'll only take out wood um if he has enough and it'll only take out uh charcoal from the furnace if he has enough probably for the entire quantity there in the furnace more or less so if he's got, like if this is set to 64, or I mean, actually if this is set to 8, he won't take out it, it, any charcoal unless he's got room for an entire stack. So I usually keep it set to 2, that way if he's got room for 16 charcoal, he'll suck it up. And that's 
pretty much it. Uh, there's a little trick you can do if you want to reset your farm to an entirely different kind of uh, sapling. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that uh, as soon as I get out of this. Uh, let's see, exit. There we go. Logger. Uh, let me go ahead and get my other saplings out. I got a whole bunch of other saplings since I've been doing a bunch of tree breeding. And this is hill cherry saplings, which is something else I want to grow for this guy. So I'll just go ahead and quickly pull out the saplings. All right. Extras. Okay, there he goes. So right now he's got no saplings and he's asking for more. So you just take a, put in some saplings. Once he gets going, quickly grab him. Uh, I missed him. Come on, get back here. Oh, crap. There we go. Just pull him out. There we go. There we go. And now he'll go ahead and chop down the trees and not put up any new saplings if you manage to get him in time. And then uh, it'll pretty much reset your farm. Now, if you want a larger sapling gap, then you're going to have to probably break all this stuff by hand. For instance, these cherry trees, um, they need a sapling gap of three. Just so I can break the... Well, so I can change the sapling gap easily. I went ahead and broke all of the dirt out of this entire farm. That way I can go ahead and hit the right button, in this case D, and change out the farm layout. So I want to go to tree gap and turn this to three. And that should be good. Now I'm going to have to probably change the turtle gap to one, because just so I can fit more in here. And that way I'll have tree every one, let's see, one, two, three, this is my second, two, three, okay, I should have a tree along there, and it first one will be here, so one, two, three, okay, so I could probably fit three by three as far as uh, cherry trees are in here, I could probably put a fourth, but I'd lose saplings off the side over there, but, um, it's not the biggest tree farm in the world, that's for sure. So, this should work pretty good. I just gotta change the width to three. So now I'll be making a three by three farm with three in between each tree and one between the first tree and the turtle. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back and he'll save all this stuff. And uh, I'll just go ahead and restart the guy. That way he'll go ahead and jump to the job logger. Whoa! Don't want those in there yet. Okay. Put the new saplings right there. And these are hill cherry saplings. And these are uh, special. I bred these with jungle trees just so they would end up a little bit taller than normal. These usually are really short, but I managed to make these ones somewhat taller. Uh, not by a lot, but probably about twice the size as they normally come when you first get them. They're usually super short, like midget trees or something. But uh, this ought to give me some nice wood. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to have a building project later, and I'm going to need a bunch of cherries, uh, cherry wood. Now, if you set an excessively long time between runs on these, which would likely end up being freaking half hour or an hour, you may actually be able to get cherries off of these, because uh, it takes a long time for these trees to produce cherries. Uh, they gotta mature. But since I'm just after the wood, I'm not gonna worry about getting cherries off of them. Pretty nice wood, too. It's nice and pretty colored. So, uh, He's went ahead and done his thing, built the farm, and these, this stuff would all grow over time. And uh, right here, on the first run before you go into a menu, it'll tell you your configuration, like furnaces above them, uh, sapling chest on the left, drop-off chest on the right, and his back, so this way. <laughs> Just a little reminder where you got to put stuff. And his wait time's over, so uh, he's going to go ahead and get to the job. Chopping down the trees already. Okay, so this is really a great way to get a whole bunch of wood. And uh, honestly, it's cheaper this way. The uh, most expensive thing is a diamond uh, axe, pretty much. Um, that way, it's pretty much an auto farm. It's ridiculously cheap. 
And if as long as you've gone to the trouble to set up the basin to catch saplings and you got some a furnace above it, it'll go on for quite some time. Now, I got another one of these set up that has run so long, it's filled up a huge chest. So, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm over at Ace's house, and he's got another one of these bases, uh, basins here to catch saplings too. And a pretty good sized tree farm. It's all jungle wood, just vanilla jungle wood here. And it's a 5x8, so it's got a lot of wood. And it's only got a sapling gap of two. Now, this guy has ran long enough to pretty much fill up this entire thing, and it was completely full earlier. And uh, once it completely fills up, and you know, somebody took out stuff from the chest, probably me, I don't remember, uh, it will go ahead and shut down the program entirely. That way, you know, it doesn't have to be running, and doesn't slow down your computer when it's not doing anything. But it won't turn off the computer until its inventory is completely full, and it'll tell you what it stopped to. And the output, ch output chest is full. Please make room in the chest and restart the program. And if you do, it'll go ahead and uh, do the tra tra uh, job. I believe this is probably an older version of it. It doesn't have the smiley face here. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and... He went ahead and emptied out his inventory into the jungle wood uh, chest here. And he's going to go ahead and... Start on with his job. Now, this is a fairly... It can be an effective way to get a whole bunch of saplings as well, as long as you've got another, you know, a type of tree that produces enough saplings to do the job and then some. Jungle trees is another one that is a little tricky. It's... You can run the farm continuously, but you may be running so, running on like a very small margin, or you have to have a really effective basin set up that catches almost everything, because they just don't quite produce enough saplings. Uh, the reason why is because these ones only have the uh, the leaves at the top, only like what three or four uh, blocks thick, more or less. Now, if you got a tree that has leaves all the way. Uh, from top to bottom, like uh, this larch right here, it produces a huge amount of saplings. And you wouldn't have any trouble running your farm pretty much forever. <laughs> so, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and hope you give my program a shot. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears trying to get this thing to work right. And it's pretty well debugged. And feel free to use it and modify it, whatever you want. Uh, Maybe even learn from it. It's a little bit of a mess on the coding end. But, oh, you know, it works pretty good. Catch you later.